Yeah, thank you for that uh, introduction. Uh, nice to be with you all today. I do think we have a, a little slide deck to go through, uh, potentially. Where's Savannah? Is she clicking on it? Get my ugly face off there. There you go. Um, yeah, so good afternoon. Uh, good to be with everyone. Uh, I'd like to go over some highlights of Budget uh, 2024. Um, this also is the way we report. This is also kind of our third quarter update as well for the 23-24 fiscal year. Uh, the theme of this year's budget is a responsible plan for a growing province. Uh, today, I'd like to outline the strategic investments we are making to support Albertans today and maintain Alberta's economic growth into the future. Budget 2024 is another balanced budget with a forecast surplus of $367 million in 24-25. This responsible plan strikes the right balance between investing wisely to meet the needs of Albertans today and ensuring those services remain sustainable to support the next generations. We are refocusing the healthcare system so every Albertan has access to care when and where they need it. We're investing in a bright future for our children with new and modernized schools and learning supports for students of all abilities. Budget 2024 keeps life more affordable for families and provides services and supports for those in need. We're also investing in a safe and secure Alberta by providing mental health, addiction and police supports so all Albertans feel secure and welcome. Finally, Budget 2024 is maintaining Alberta's competitive advantage, boosting jobs, attracting investment and strengthening our position as the nation's economic engine. The future is promising. Following a year of solid growth, we expect we will continue to see people flock to Alberta driving our population up by 3.7% in 2024. So slightly, slightly down from the 4% we saw in this year. Job gains will continue, which will help industries facing labor shortages attract and retain more workers. We're also welcoming investment from across Canada and around the world. Uh, a few examples, we have a bioethanol plant coming to Calgary, a new milk plant near Black Falls and a chocolate facility in Stony Plain. Uh, there's the Dow Chemicals net zero carbon emissions ethylene cracker that I'm sure everyone in here is familiar with, the Air Products Hydrogen Facility, the McCain Foods Potato Processing Facility, and the list goes on as we create an environment that generates more jobs, diversifies the economy, and builds the Alberta advantage. The uncertainty from the layering of harmful and foolish federal policies is preventing Alberta's economy from reaching its full potential and holding back investment and productivity gains, not just in the province, but across the country. I know I definitely heard that loud and clear from my uh, provincial colleagues at our FPT meetings. We're also facing significant debt servicing costs, which are expected to be 3.4 billion in 24-25. Uh, to give you an idea of that, it wasn't long ago that number was more like 2.7. That's the kind of increase we've seen over the last two years. Without a responsible plan to pay down debt when we can, uh, we will be on the hook for far more. And there is the very real and immediate concern of natural disasters, extreme weather events. Last summer's wildfire season burned 2.2 million hectares and forced the evacuation of more than 38,000 people. It also depleted our $1.5 billion contingency. Uh, currently, almost 60 fires uh, have burned through the winter and are burning underground. The ongoing drought is a huge concern for our farmers, uh, for industry and for all Albertans, uh, especially in, in central and southern Alberta. With little rain on the horizon, we need a responsible plan that will prepare us and our kids for whatever tomorrow may bring. Uh, we must spend and plan with the future in mind, making the most out of every available dollar. Yeah, let's take a look at the provincial revenues. Uh, our forecast revenue of $73.5 billion for 24-25 is $2.1 billion lower than the forecast for 23-24. Uh, certainly the ups and downs of oil prices have much to do, to, to, to do with that. Uh, in budget uh, 24, we have the forecast for oil in this year at $74 and are holding it flat in the out years. Uh, this is a decrease um, from what we would have saw in the forecast in the last budget. Um, 
it's nice to be on the right side of this currently. Um, oil, it was over $80 today, so we we are seeing that upside potential in the Alberta finances. Uh, but certainly, we do want to be uh, conservative um, in these estimates as well. Uh, how we come to that number, if you're curious, there's a, a group of uh, industry analysts and bank forecasters that um, that we use, and we try to take the average of their forecasts and be be in kind of the the bottom quartile. I think this year the range was roughly from seventy dollars to eighty two dollars, and we're we're coming in at seventy four. So we're we're trying trying to be conservative. Uh, I have heard stories of finance ministers that uh, really don't enjoy the day after they print the budget and see oil tank and be twelve dollars on the wrong side of it the very next day. Uh, so it, it is it is nice to see this right now. Um, but although uh, resource revenue is down in the forecast, um, it is expected to tick up over the next couple of years. We should have uh, some more upside. We expect to get more of our heavy oil, um, more for our heavy oil, pardon me, when the Trans Mountain Pipeline opens next year. Uh, the world needs our clean energy, and with TMX, we will get our vast resources to the West Coast more efficiently and increase access to global markets. One of the best things with TMX is that um, it, it will narrow our differential um, in a very stable way going forward. In the forecast in this year, we have the differential at $16. So when I say that, it's the difference between WTI and WCS. So we're going to be getting closer uh, to the actual WTI number going forward once once TMX is is operational, and they're still looking for line fill in second quarter of this year. Uh, another thing you may have uh, seen in the news: uh, we are following suit behind Saskatchewan and uh, 44 U.S. jurisdictions like California, Montana, and Oregon uh, by introducing a new annual tax on electric vehicles. Uh, this came up in a big way uh, over the last year when we tried to uh, give, uh, as an affordability measure, um, fuel tax relief uh, to Albertans. Um, the beauty of that program is when oil's high, fuel's high. So it seemed very defensible that when oil reached a certain threshold, the program actually paid for itself. We were taking more in and revenue and felt like we could give that affordability measure to the owners of the resource, all Albertans. Uh, but it did strike a lot of conversations, um, and we received a lot of emails and thoughts about uh, should we pursue an EV tax like these other jurisdictions, more so in a point of fairness. I think notionally, uh, most Albertans believe that uh, the fuel tax goes towards uh, highway maintenance. Um, certainly, that's, that's, that's my take, although it does go to general revenues. We pay uh, far more uh, for our highway maintenance than we receive in the fuel tax. But uh, we've gone down this path uh, in hopes of um, ensuring that that's a secure revenue line going forward. Uh, I guess uh, we have seen a great increase in the amount of electric vehicles on the roads. It's gone up like 230% over two years. Uh, so we, we think that's a, a defensible move for the future and that's why you're seeing it happen in, in most of these other jurisdictions. Um, it's $200 annually, and that aligns uh, almost exactly with what the average Albertan would pay uh, in the fuel tax over the course of the year. Even with these tax increases, we continue to have among the lowest taxes in the country. Albertans are charged at least $19 billion less in taxes than they would pay if they lived in any other province. Uh, overall, we are carefully shaping and refining Alberta's competitive tax advantage. Uh, slide six. Healthcare. Uh, we know health care is a top priority of Albertans. We want Albertan, every Albertan to have their own family doctor, you're fitting after that slide, and develop a new compensation model for nurse practitioners. We're investing $475 million to strengthen primary care. We're also transforming continuing care so seniors can age with dignity in the community with better access to home care and end-of-life care. And we're investing in new mental health and addiction facilities to keep expanding access to our recovery-oriented system, system of care in all communities. Slide seven, yeah. We're also building a bright future for our children and investing in the success of our families. 
To address enrollment growth this year, Budget 2024 will allow schools to hire hundreds more teachers. Schools across Alberta will be able to hire more educational assistants and other support staff to help with specialized learning needs. 43 new school projects are going forward in communities where we're seeing the biggest pressures. Uh, these new projects will add 35,000 new and modernized student spaces. In total, there will be 98 new and modernized school projects around the province. That's, that's the total amount of projects that are currently in the capital plan. Budget 2024 also helps keep life affordable and supports Albertans most affected by inflation and the high cost of living. We're helping build another 3,300 new affordable housing units and finishing 1,800 units already started. We're expanding our rental assistance program to support an additional 550 households in need. I might just add on the schools, um, probably of interest to this room, um, of the 43 new schools, I believe 13 are in Edmonton, uh, 11 in Calgary, there's eight Francophone schools, um, and I guess the difference would be spread around the province. I think uh, Minister Nicolades is, is having a press conference today to go into a few more of those details, but uh, uh, definitely trying to respond to the population surge we've seen in Edmonton. Uh, safe, secure communities. Uh, Budget 24 also continues our work to make Alberta a more safe and welcoming place to live and work. We're supporting police and mental health crisis teams to respond together to help people with mental health challenges. And we're adding hundreds of new homeless shelter spaces and supporting women's shelters and programs that work to prevent family violence and sexual assault. A slide eight, please. Uh, safeguarding from natural disasters. Uh, we're not only protecting Albertans and communities from crime and violence. Budget 2024 also protects our environment and prepares our communities and economy to face future floods and the very real threat of drought and worsening wildfires. That's why we're investing $206 million to enhance the capacity of the province to fight wildfires, uh, including personnel and new firefighting equipment. We are also upgrading the current air tanker fleet. Um, this will be a bit of a long process. It uh, requires placing an order and delivery will take probably six years, but uh, it'll be through de Havilland, their new facility. Uh, we currently have four air tankers. Um, I know this started when I was in forestry, but it bothered me that they cost so much and they're all the same age. I thought that we needed a procurement plan that spaced out um, when we turn them back and when we get another, as opposed to just lump some uh, needs all, all in one year. So we're going to proceed with that, that plan. Uh, and we're also using some new technology uh, to help fight and assess wildfires at night. Uh, we think it'll save a lot of money and time. Uh, we're also shoring up Alberta's valuable water supply and protecting our communities from both drought conditions and the dangers of floods. With over 251 million over three years, communities will build more berms, dams, canals, and reservoirs to protect people and properties from floods and droughts. Slide nine. Uh, budget 2024 also supports a number of water projects to protect our province and conserve our landscapes for decades to come. We must provide farmers and agricultural producers a reliable and safe water supply to grow the crops and water the cattle that feed our families and people around the world. The budget invests more than $250 million in irrigation projects across Alberta. Uh, we're making investments across the province to maintain Alberta's competitive advantage. Through Budget 2024, we're attracting more investment, supporting more jobs, and developing a skilled and diversified workforce to keep our economy growing. We're adding 3,200 seats in apprenticeship programs and expanding learning facilities so that more students can access education in the trades, mechanics, and science. And we're supporting projects such as the Alberta Petrochemical Incentive Program and the Alberta Carbon Capture Incentive Program. This is driving clean technology development adding more jobs and helping Alberta reduce emissions. Fiscal responsibility. We, we have balanced our budget with spending that can be sustained going forward and we're using our surplus to strategically pay down maturing debt when we can and save in the Alberta Heritage Savings Trust Fund. After another 3.2 billion debt payment in the end of this fiscal year in 23-24, we've paid down our debt by 16.6 billion over the last two years. 
We're using the good fortunes of today responsibly so future generations won't be on the hook to pay for our costly decisions. So in conclusion, it's a short speech, hope that's okay. With budget 2024, we're doing what every responsible Albertan would do. We're taking a hard look at our financial situation from all angles, the expenses we know are coming up, the money we have coming in, and the debt we need to repay. We're investing strategically in the priorities of Albertans, strengthening health care and education for our families and children. We're providing communities, businesses, and industry partners with tools to responsibly manage our resources. This budget is built for today and tomorrow. So thank you very much, and I'll leave leave that there, and I think we're going into a fireside. Kelly? Thank you, Minister.